Hi, hello! This video is coming to you in the style of uh, better late than never because I sort of skipped my monthly roundup and empties for the months of June, July and August and we're already in mid-September so let's count September also in the count as well. So this is going to be basically more like my summer roundup and empties and I'm just going to briefly talk about all the products that I have purchased and how I feel about them in the past couple of months. There's going to be absolutely no rhyme or reason here. I'm just going to pull out whatever I remember that I bought recently and we're going to briefly talk about it and when I say brief I hope brief because otherwise this video is going to be over an hour long and nobody got time for that. Okay without further ado let's get started. I always talk a little bit about uh, jewelry and uh, perfumes as well so I think I'm going to start with that. The end of the video is going to be reserved for empties as usual. Empties. There are several perfumes that I've really enjoyed over the summer and I spoke briefly in my previous video already about uh, I Want Chew from Jimmy Choo. I still really love that perfume if anything I love it more uh, but a perfume that I have fallen in love with like head over heels recently is Tom Ford Velvet Orchid. I have a little 30 milliliter size here. This is my very first ever Tom Ford scent. I have gone to like smell his scents before, but they always felt like so overwhelmingly masculine. His scents are meant to be uh, unisex, and while they are unisex, they, a lot of them just smell a little too masculine for me. I'm a girly girl, deep down I'm a girly girl, I want my girly girl perfumes. And this perfume just has notes to it that I feel like make it a little bit more feminine. Let me move a little bit so that I can put somewhere here on the screen the a screenshot from Fragrantica's website, because obviously I'm terrible at describing scents and detecting like the different notes of perfumes. I'm just going to leave it, leave it right here. But what I want to say about my personal experience with this perfume is this is very expensive. It is the most expensive perfume that I own but also it is the more the most complex and most dynamic scent that I own. It is so sultry and so elegant and so like sexy sultry grown as woman scent. And what surprised me the most about this perfume is that you put it on and then you can like detect the scent on yourself without it being too overwhelming. For example, I Want Chew is so offensive that I can smell myself the whole day and I really like that. This perfume I cannot smell myself as strongly, but whenever I catch a whiff of myself it is always something different. This perfume just kind of like opens and evolves and it is always so dynamic and so complex that it almost feels like you're wearing 10 different scents throughout the day. It's something else that I have discovered over the summer and I have become completely like obsessed with it to the point where now every other Sunday one of my friends from work and I have uh, many Sundays. I purchased my first kit for um, gel nails. This is from a brand called Pink Gel Luck and because of the name I would assume that it's Dutch because Gel Luck is just gel nail polish in Dutch. Um, this is my very first like touch at all with gel nail polish because I had never even gone to, I've never gone to a nail salon before, I've never had my nails done um, and color me impressed. This stuff really stays on as long as they have promised that it will stay on and even if it doesn't it doesn't because you kind of like start, at least I, start to like fuck around with it and I kind of like peel off my nails so they come off in like huge like single chunks which is very satisfying but it also fucks with your uh, nails. The only time I didn't do that was when I was on holiday and I really made it a point that I'm not going to fuck around with my nails because I really want them to stay and I was so incredibly impressed because they lasted over 14 days. The only thing you could see was outgrowth of my nails and mind you I was at the beach digging my hands into sand for a full nine days. So uh, now I have the machine, I have a bunch of colors and my friend and I are super into it. I'm heading to town in a little bit to pop into their store again to look at some of the colors live. So yeah, that is one of my newest um, discoveries and obsessions. All right, you guys, let's talk makeup. Uh, again, no rhyme or reason. I'm just going to pull out things randomly as soon as I remember, oh, I purchased this in the last couple of months. Uh, the thing that is in front of me right now because I just did my makeup with it is the Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction from Pat McGrath Labs. I've talked about this uh, palette so extensively that I almost feel like it's pointless to talk about it again, but I wanted to just, you know, update you that my feelings on this palette haven't really changed since uh, the week of Moonlit Seduction that I did here on my channel. 
I like this palette, I just don't love it. And I think the reason I'm never going to love it is because these shades are not in her baked formula. And while I don't love this palette, there are individual shades in here that I really, really love and I wanted to mention. I really love this beautiful astral gold here. The astral lavender shade is just absolutely beautiful as well. And I really enjoy this shade a lot, the shade Platinum Dusk. It's also what I have. I partially have this uh, on my eyes today. I have Platinum Dusk on my lids. I have this um, brown, like taupe brown shade in the outer corners of my eyes. Um, I do have Statuesque through my crease and I do have a shade from Decadence in my inner corners. But the point I was trying to make is that Platinum Dusk is another shade that I really enjoy. I like the formula of that shade. I like the sparkle. I like um, what a beautiful, interesting, unique tone it is so overall i like this palette but i'm just never going to love it because we were robbed of the baked shade experience in here and also because there are certain shades here that are just really color color wise not for me um and like bring down the emotional factor for me for this palette like this maroon shade um this shade i just don't like the like reddish maroonish undertone that it has i don't know i feel like this palette had the potential to be something so much more now since i'm talking about pat mcgrath let's just uh, stick with her products and talk about the blush duo this is the shade paradise glow uh which i'm also like very lukewarm about not because i don't like it but because it's very hard to get excited about something that you already have. I was not aware of the fact when I was ordering this blush that these would be existing shades in her collection. This is basically Paradise uh, Venus, which I already own and love. And this shade here is very close to another shade that I love and adore from her, which is Desert Orchid. Uh, and when the photos of this were first released, this looked more like a browny, bronzy, nudie type of duo and something like a completely different shade than it turned out to be. And I ordered it on release day and I had no idea that it would be basically repeat shades. So I love the individual blushes, but I've already loved them for a year and I have them in singles. So as it is, this is very travel friendly. So if you're traveling a lot, these are very handy to have. I did take this with me on summer holiday and I really enjoyed it, but I'm it's, I'm finding it very hard to be excited about it because it's not anything new. But if I'm being completely honest, had I had the knowledge that these would not be new shades, I probably would not have bought Paradise Glow. A purchase that I feel very differently about though, something that I have zero regrets about, is the uh, Natasha Denona Face Glam Palette in the light version. I already have the dark version and I really really love it and because I love it so much and I especially really enjoy the metallic formula that's in these palettes I decided to go for this one as well because the other one is just a little bit too smoky. Sometimes I want something super easy and in that formula but a little bit lighter in tone and I decided to purchase this one. I purchased it second hand on our like local version of uh, eBay and I was able to get it for a really good price basically brand new. I really like the cream to powder blush the highlighter is a really really gorgeous tone and a beautiful formula very reminiscent of like golden moonlight and golden nectar from pat mcgrath labs which reminds me i forgot to talk about golden moonlight let me grab that okay we're going to talk about it in a little bit but uh, i absolutely love the five ash eyeshadows that are in here you can create the most beautiful soft yet glam impactful looks ever because these two shades are such a beautiful formula they are very sparkly yet very like lightweight on the lid this one has the most beautiful like rose gold tone to it this one is a bit more of like a boring champagne but what i really love to do with this palette actually is to apply these two together on my lids and what i've been what i have also been doing a lot throughout the summer is uh applying these on my lids and then like an inner corner pop of color like a mint green or a lavender purple or a light blue or something like pretty much anything would work and it just works so beautifully okay let's go back to pat mcgrath now because i forgot that together with the blush the blush duo i did buy another shade of her highlighter which comes in the formula that was originally released with golden nectar and i adore golden nectar but let me tell you before I got a 10 and I could use this shade all the time, I was completely addicted to it. I think this may eventually become my favorite highlighter in my whole collection because it is the perfect, like the absolute most perfect shade of champagne gold. 
a lot of her champagne golds are, or stuff that she calls champagne gold, tend to lean very pink and very cool toned for my taste. But Golden Moonlight is the absolute perfect highlighter for my skin when I don't have a tan. And the tone of this is just so flattering against my skin. It just really gives me that like lifting effect on my cheekbones. I love Hello. Golden Moonlight. We have two more eyeshadow palettes or like quads to talk about. And those are both um, my first like high-end luxury, like classic luxury brand um, makeup purchases. The first one, and I've showed this already on my channel twice, I'm going to link both videos in the um, cards here for you. The first one is this Guerlain Ombre G Quad in the shade Royal Jungle, which I've already demoed twice on my channel. This comes in this beautiful like baked gelée formula. I love everything about this quad. I love all the four shades. Specifically, I love these three. This is a really beautiful topper without really being overly glittery and like the glitter particles are a little bit more finely milled and a bit more sophisticated. I love the variety of textures that you get in here and uh, it's going to probably come as a surprise to you but the shade out of this quad that I love the most is actually this dark brown shade because it has such an interesting formula and finish to it. It's like a cream to powder formula so it feels like it's a baked shade but it also feels slightly putty there is zero fall fallout when you apply this shade and i just love the texture of it so so much that i feel like the rest of these shades they're pretty and i love the texture and the formula on them but they're not very unique none of the color stories are very unique there are not really a very unique colors in the whole collection but I do find the textures to be very pleasant, very easy to work with and just so elegant on the lids. So I really love this quad and I think it just looks beautiful. The packaging is very, very classy. Something that also came as an absolute shock and surprise to me was this Dior Quintet, which I bought uh, very recently. This is in the shade uh, Soft Cashmere and they have like a whole lineup of these Quintets. This is the only one... The reason I purchased it is because of the color story. Because I've been waiting for Pat to give us like a truly cool toned, interesting cool toned color story. Something with a lot of like shifty taupes, like glittery browny taupes. Not necessarily like a monochromatic story, but just a palette that features those types of shades. And the only shade in Moonlit Seduction that sort of comes close to that is uh, Platinum Dusk. Platinum Dusk is still a very smoky shade. And this offers, again, a variety of different textures in that beautiful, elegant baked formula and just surprisingly unique tones, or at least unique tones to my collection. A lot of the colors in here could be considered very similar to the Glam palette from Natasha Denona, which I also have. Uh, and while I love Natasha Denona's Glam palette, that palette suffers from the disadvantage of being a very basic beige palette when it comes to its formulas. It's just mattes and metallics. There's nothing interesting about it. Whereas these are interesting neutral tones, but also delivered in that elegant baked formula. So you have a matte, you have these two satin shades, you have that beautiful metallic um, light taupe glittery shade, and you have this uh, topper shade. This topper shade is probably one of the most like subtle, subtle topper shades that I've ever come across. So if you thought the Guerlain ones were subtle for your taste, this one is going to basically look like a finishing powder for you. Uh, but I really like it because I feel like it fits the aesthetic of this quintet and the aesthetic that Dior is probably going for, which is like a more, you know, elevated, not so in your face glittery type of look. Lisa Eldridge released a couple of new lipsticks for the summer. One of them is the shade that I have on my lips right now, and that is the shade Meet Me in Berlin. And I can tell you, Meet Me in Berlin has hardly left my lips since I bought it. In the beginning, I was wearing more of like the insanely saturated lips because they are like a brighter summery type colors. But as soon as I put something a little bit smokier on my eyes, I'm like, hmm, Meet Me in Berlin. It is just the perfect 90s chocolate brown lip without being too dark. It's very buildable. It comes in her luxuriously loosened formula, which I really love for how comfortable, buildable, and um, how nicely it wears throughout the day. And I really love the color. I love me a good nude with like more brown undertones to it. And Meet Me in Berlin is exactly that and so much more. And when I purchased it, I thought, oh, this is going to be a handy lipstick to have, you know, for those looks that require a little bit more of like a brown nude. But I'm so surprised that I pull for this lipstick so often, so much more often than I was expecting, actually. And the other three lipsticks that I picked up from her are 
all in her insanely saturated formula. The insanely saturated formula has been around for a little bit and she brought back some of the colors that had been previously available but then were out of stock for a really long time. The first one is this beautiful bright coral pink shade which is the shade um, Rainbow Spill. This is my like least favorite out of the three that I, that I purchased and not because it is not an absolutely stunning lipstick but mostly because pink is just not a color that I like to wear that often. But when I do want to go for like a bright warm toned pink in the summer, Rainbow Spill is perfect. Oh. Skyscraper Rose is another one of the previously released colors. This is a gorgeous like a uh, red tinted magenta shade and I love Skyscraper Rose. Skyscraper Rose looks so flattering um, on me. I, I love this color. It is by no means a very very unique color but I think the delivery in this formula and just you know the overall presentation with the packaging and how it looks on the lips just seals the deal for me and makes this lipstick so special. And by far my favorite out of the three. The color that truly stole my heart out of all of these is the shade uh, Strawberry Shock. Strawberry Shock is this beautiful like watermelony red lipstick. Very unique, very beautiful. It just looks so so stunning and I I'm a little bit sad that we're going into like the fall and winter months now. I just don't know that I would wear this shade uh, a lot in the winter. I don't know that I have like even like clothes that would fit with it. I will find ways to wear Strawberry Shock, but if I don't, trust me, I will miss it so much until spring and summer 2023 arrive. So we are at outfit number three because I realized uh, when I started editing my video that I rambled about a bunch of things that I had rambled about in my previous monthly roundup and empties and I forgot to mention a bunch of things that I did actually purchase over the summer. So let's quickly go over those, shall we? First I want to talk about the uh, Lancome Taint Idol Concealer. In terms of shade, this is the shade 01, which is um, very confusing to me because even on me, this is a little bit darker than my skin tone. This fits me now and it fit me over the summer because I had quite a tan, but as soon as we go into the more winter months and I lose my tan, I will have to mix this with something lighter in tone. Uh, so in terms of shade, this is not optimal. In terms of formula, I was initially quite unsure how I feel about this because it is not as luminous and hydrating as I'm used to or I prefer. I usually prefer my concealers to be very hydrating, very emollient, uh, almost oily because I have really dry under eyes. And this, in terms of finish, is a bit more on the like satin matte. So it dries down to like a satin matte finish, it definitely doesn't have any glow to it. But at the same time, it has a bit of a smoothing effect on the skin. So I do actually quite like how it looks on my skin. It dries out my under eyes just a tiny bit. Not by a stretch even as bad as other concealers do. So this is just slightly, slightly drying. But it also has that very beautiful smoothing effect. So I've actually quite grown to like this concealer. Um, and I will be a little bit sad when I have to mix it with another formula because when you mix something with a different formula, you do fuck with the formula. Now, another complexion product that I forgot to mention is the Chanel Le Beige, the Water Fresh Complexion Touch. Also, do you want to hear a fun fact? I'm going to be 40 in a couple of months and I've already started doing this when I have to read things. If that doesn't tell you I'm getting older, I don't know what does. So I purchased this a couple of months ago, basically after it released. This is a new product from Chanel. It is basically a new iteration of a product in their collection that already exists, uh, but has a much lower coverage. Well, you can build it to be very light coverage because basically you have these like pigment balls submerged in water. And then depending on how much of the pigment balls you have, you're going to have more or less coverage. So that's something I really like about this product that you can really play around with the coverage and you can build it up if you want to have more of like a medium coverage foundation. I use it somewhere on the like border between light and medium. And that is usually for me one pump of this foundation. I actually quite like this. I'm wearing it right now and uh, what I do really like about it is, you know, the buildability, the fact that it really smoothens out my skin, it looks really natural, it really becomes one with your skin uh, over the course of the day. The one thing I don't like about this is that even if I powder, it kind of like, my face kind of remains tacky. Even immediately after I have applied it and I've put powder on, because I do powder my face after I apply foundation, I still feel 
that my skin is a little bit tacky. So that's something you should be warned about if you're considering using this as a foundation. It's not like a self-setting type of product. And last but certainly not least, I want to mention two products that uh, if you've been around my channel, you know very well how I feel about the new Charlotte Tilbury Sunkissed sun kissed glow bronzers these were also a new release from charlotte tilbury they were released over this summer and i basically love everything about these uh, bronzers i love the packaging i think it is so beautiful so luxe so summery and i actually quite enjoy both of the shades that i picked up as well as the formula um to me really the the winning component of this item really is the formula because it's something new something exciting something i haven't experienced before and i get really excited these days by formulas and textures um not so much like colors anymore but this has a very interesting like cream to powder formula it's very smoothing on the skin very easy to blend out if you don't like cream bronzers that are too waxy and too like almost tacky i think you're really going to like this because this has a very like powder e finish on the skin not that it's a powder but it just really sets to a finish that's more like a satin powder on the skin the shades that i have are this one which is 01 this is the lightest shade and this one i would consider more of your classical bronzer shade this is not something that is really going to warm up your skin much maybe only if you're very very pale on me this is more of a bronzer shade because it has um those like taupey like cool tones to it that really like um serve more as a contour rather than a bronzer for me now the shade 02 which is the one that i picked up truly for its uh, bronzing uh, capabilities is also the one that i have used the most because uh i have a tan and shade 01 is going to look absolutely abysmal with me right now so that's saved for the winter when i'm pale and i'm going to be busting out the divine rose one palette and i'm going to be doing all of these like delicious cool tone looks but over the summer i've used heavily this shade the shade 02 i really really enjoy this shade not that it's a very like groundbreaking shade in terms of bronzer it's your classic warm toned bronzer but like i said to me this product is just the whole package the packaging the formula the shade just everything about it really works for me i do have to warn you though because i haven't really done anything special with my bronzers i keep them here without them really touching anything else um, in my drawers and my packaging as you can see is already a little bit busted over here which is uh, a bit of a shame but other than that i really have no other qualms with these two products i really really love them all right different day different makeup but let's now tackle the empties and i'm going to split this in perfume empties uh, skincare empties and makeup empties so let's start off with the perfume empties don't know if you remember that but a while back i mentioned that i have purchased this exploratory set from uh Re the replica perfumes by maison margiela i'm not sure i'm pronouncing that right but i finished one of those and the one that i finished was called sailing day so let me actually pull up to tell you what exactly the notes were of this perfume now uh, i will say this i've now tried all of the perfumes some of them i really like some of them are um really not my cup of tea but i also have to say from the ones that i have tried and i have liked nothing is really so memorable that when i finished it i thought oh i can't wait to go and buy the full size they're nice to try and i will finish them but they're neither of these scents is something that i would go out and purchase a full size of. and the scent that i was talking about the sailing day it is it was a very pleasant scent it had like a very like aquatic slightly floral notes to it um i will put the notes somewhere here on the screen so that you can see what i'm talking about this was one of my favorite scents which is the reason why it is one of the uh first ones if maybe not the first one to uh, actually be completely done so i really enjoyed this you know for the time that it lasted and i think especially for the summer it was quite pleasant i'm sorry nicola is here and is distracting me and the second scent that i finished is actually a full size of uh honey by mark jacobs <laughs> So Honey by Marc Jacobs is a scent that I'm not even sure that still exists and you might be able to see that uh, unfortunately it's not even completely finished yet. But what happened to this perfume is this guy. He was fucking around with it when he was little and he did something to the, uh, yeah, the spray mechanism here. So I sprayed as much as I could out of it 
and the last few times that I tried to use this nothing was even coming out so unfortunately whatever is left in here I will have to sacrifice because I just cannot use this perfume anymore. Overall I quite liked this. I tend to quite enjoy the scents from uh, Marc Jacobs and while his bottles are quite over the top I actually think they're very cute and um, I enjoy them. Again I will leave the notes of the perfume somewhere here. Obviously uh, it's called honey so somewhere in the notes I think uh, in the base notes there is actually honey but for the most part it's like a light fruity and and one that I cannot really compliment on being very long lasting. While I really like this, I have others. I have another scent from uh, Marc Jacobs that is much more long lasting on my skin. This unfortunately is also a scent that I primarily used in the summer, so maybe that's the reason why it evaporated off my skin so quickly because I was like, you know, sweating and stuff. But unfortunately, it is not a scent that I that lasted on my skin past like three four hours and obviously with this over the top bottle i'm not going to be dragging this with me so while i am sad that i cannot use the last bits of it i'm not like very disappointed to have this exit my collection of perfumes because it is not a scent that i'm going to miss dearly all right he's distracting me it's a chaos here but let's talk about the skincare that i finished in the past couple of months first let's talk about uh my one percent retinol from paula's choice this is basically the alpha and omega, the foundation of my skincare routine, the only active ingredient that I think truly has made a very significant difference for the condition of my skin over the last decade that I've been using it. I think I've been using retinol for the past decade. I'm very lucky that I can use retinol without any like consequences like drying or irritation on my skin. I'm pretty sure I can use it every day and get away with it. I usually use it like every other day, but... Do you, Nicola? day if you want to hear my in-depth skincare routine i will point you to a video that i'm going to just uh, link up in the cards here obviously i had a backup i have already uh, opened the backup so this is something that is an absolute staple in my skincare routine if you can tolerate retinol this is probably one of the better retinol products uh, that is easily available on the market and for a reasonable price speaking of retinol i finished a night cream this is the intensive repair cream with retinol also from paula's choice a very pleasant texture of this cream uh, not too thick not too silicone at least not for my taste quite a pleasant night cream that really hydrated the skin without feeling too heavy it contains retinol which is why i enjoyed it now a product that i um was happy to finish because i think i had had it for a really long time and i'm not even sure that it was active or all that active anymore is the clear ultralight daily hydrating fluid broad spectrum uh, spf from for blemish prone blemish prone skin again from paul's choice this is like a very liquid very lightweight uh, spf that just sinks almost immediately into your skin. I had kind of sort of forgotten that I had this and then I found it and I thought I'm going to take this on holiday with me because I'm going to be applying uh, a lot of SPF there and it's a good, you know, opportunity to finish this. I finished it almost and then I put it in my bag and then unfortunately it had popped open right here uh, on, on our way back so there was a bit of a uh, spillage in my skincare bag nothing too dramatic everything came off no problem but in the end because this was already not airtight and I had had this for a really long time I think the last like few drops of that I kind of like squeezed into the sink and I called it a day this is very nice I highly recommend this if you have indeed very like very oily very acne prone skin and you want something that is extremely lightweight and is going to sink to your skin almost immediately this is not my current favorite spf day cream though if you've watched my video uh, on my skincare routine you will know which one it is and either way it will come up in my empties um, next time because my current package is actually almost finished now a product from paula's choice that um i've had several times now i've always gotten it as a gift with purchase that i could not pick myself because sometimes with paula's choice they give you these very generous uh, gift with purchase that are basically like half a full-size product that really gives you an idea how much you're going to benefit from a certain skincare uh, ingredient or not um total like sidetrack but anyway a lot of the times they will let you choose what you want but not this one the product that i'm talking about is the unscrub uh, which cleanses away excess oil and impurities and has dissolving beads which gently smooth the skin and uh, what I can say about this product it is very pleasant it is uh, one of those if you really like those like bead type of products uh, but you don't want to actually like physically harm your skin 
but you like the sensation of the beads and you get the idea that they're like really clean cleansing your skin i'm uh, really going to like this this is very uh it's a very pleasant um cleanser the problem is that it just doesn't fit into my skincare routine because i have uh, my foreo device my foreo cleansing device and the foreo cleansing device doesn't really work with beads so basically what i was doing with this is like uh, in the morning when i just have to like wash a whole bit of the skincare and the uh, excess oil i will just use that as my morning cleanse not as my evening cleanse because for my evening cleanse i really prefer my uh for you luna oh this one i really like so this is the radiance renewal mask with um bearberry and vitamin c i have had like multiple um samples of this i've never actually bought a full size but it is one of my favorite products from paula's choice it is a leave-on treatment that you just put uh, at the end of your like skincare routine in the night and then you go to bed and then you leave it on and oh my gosh my skin always looks so plumped rejuvenated and like bright in the morning after i have used this this is a really great product i highly recommend this i've gone through another full size of my uh, laneige sleep sleeping mask this is the grapefruit one this is the one the one that comes in like the 20 gram jar mine is completely uh, empty and actually i've already cleaned off the jar because i plan on reusing it for you know other purposes but this is my favorite like lip mask treatment like overnight treatment i've been very loyal to, to this product since uh 2018 uh it takes me about two years to go through the whole thing if i use it every single night which i do and this was my second tub and if anyone's ever tried to convince you that this does the same thing as vaseline they are wrong okay vaseline does absolutely not do the same thing this is so so such a better product and the last portion of this video which is going to be the makeup empties let's start with the clarins instant concealer which i have talked about uh quite a bit on my channel i purchased it a couple of years ago and it is one of the one of the few concealers that didn't make my under eyes look like the sahara desert and and um, if I'm being completely honest with you, this is not completely done. I've tried my best to finish it, but lately I also realized that it's the wrong tone for me. I don't know when it occurred to me. Maybe I was watching someone's video where they were talking about, you know, undertones of concealers and what works really well to conceal, you know, like um, a little bit of the, the darkness underneath your eyes. And then I went to swatch this concealer next to the concealers that I have from um, First Aid Beauty. And I was like, why am I using this concealer? This concealer is too light and it's just too pink. And while I enjoy the texture and I don't mind it, it was never my favorite. And honestly, I was just trying to get through it. So why am I struggling? I've like used like about 70% of it. So now we can part ways. I have gone through another one of my MAC Lip Prep and Prime, um, you know, lip primer little pens here. I've scraped literally everything out. Every time that I reach the point where I can't really apply it uh, on my lips anymore, I will take my little spatula and I will depot whatever I have left in a little jar and use that up. I really think this does something for my lips. Well, not for my lips, but for the, um, the way that my lipstick applies and the longevity of my lipstick and also that it stays within my lip lines. I really like this product. I recommend it if you're struggling with any of those things. Mmm, mm, it's my click. Another product that you will probably have noticed uh, has come around in empties portions of these videos before is the Kiko Extra Sculpt mm -hmm. Mascara. I've been loyal to this for a couple of years. I've sprayed a couple of times. I've even cheated on it with far more, you know, luxurious versions. And I've never gotten quite the satisfaction that I do when I use uh, this specific mascara. I know that mascara is one of those things that is extremely personal and what works for me may not work for you. I know for a lot of, a lot of people, the uh, spoolie of this is just too thick on the inner portion of the uh, eyes and they don't enjoy the process of applying this mascara but honestly i have not had a mascara that does quite the same as this does for my lashes it uh, thickens them it gives them volume it gives them length and together with the uh, estee lauder little black primer it just gives me that false lash effect and on top of that it is one of the most affordable mascaras that i have in my collection honestly if you go to the drugstore nowadays l'oreal mascaras can go as expensive as like 18 euros this without 
discount costs around 9 10 euros now a little bit with inflation it has increased it used to be around 7 to 8 euros and i would always purchase it 40 percent off so i've basically never really paid more than 5 euros for this mascara and honestly for what it does it is amazing and finally let's talk about the makeup empty that i am the absolute most proud of this is the original fenty um lip gloss in the shade fenty glow I don't know whether you can see this is completely gone if there is uh, a little bit left in here i am reluctant to use it because the packaging has started to leak around the edges so every time i grab it it's like really sticky and disgusting i've decided that since 99 percent of it is done i am going to call it quits and i'm really proud to have finished this because i thought this would be one of those products that's probably going to end up in the trash and i'm never going to use up and i'm going to be super mad at myself because it wasn't cheap but what i decided to do is i pulled it out to use it instead of like a lip balm so every time i start my you know whole makeup uh, beautifying routine in the morning one of the first things that i will do is i will apply a lip balm and then i thought why do i not just apply this instead of the lip balm it will still you know take care of my lips before i apply a lipstick and it will also ensure that i use this on a daily basis so that i actually go through it and you know what i use it for probably a little over half a year every single time that i did my makeup sometimes even um you know just as a, like a lip treatment throughout the day if i wasn't wearing any makeup but i did think it was pretty creative of me to use it up that way and i'm really really proud of this specific empty so good job maria so anyways i hope you enjoyed this uh, makeup roundup and empties for the summer of 2022 uh, i'm sorry it was probably very very long but you know one thing led to another and instead of doing uh, one every month like i had promised to I didn't really get a chance to do one of those videos in the summer and here we are deep into september doing this <laughs> for the summer months you know i'll try to get better i'll try to do this on a monthly basis but for now thank you so so much if you made it all the way until the end of this video and as usual i will see you in the next one bye